In this video, we will focus on technical as well as the soft skills questions asked as part of information technology position interview. Sometimes you might be asked questions related to DNS to help employer understand how well you know networking features of Windows 10 Server. DNS stands for Domain Name Server and mostly used to interpret domain names in numeric IP addresses. It's important to know that DNS itself uses port 53 on TCP or UDP. Sometimes you might be asked the question, what type of queries DNS can perform? And the answer to this question is that DNS can only perform two types of queries, iterative and recursive. It is always a good idea to create a backup of your drive C when computer is still working and you don't have any issues. This way, you can restore drive C in case of the disaster. To complete the backup of your drive C, you might consider creating system image disk in Windows 10. To do that, you need to navigate to backup. You can go directly by typing the backup uh, right in the start menu, or you can also uh, call the same option from settings. Here in backup, we go to go backup and restore option from Windows 7, and then choose an option to create system image. Windows is looking for the drives where it will attempt to save the backup. And it should be a separate drive. So this way, if something happens to your C drive, you can restore from another drive. In my configuration, I have two drives available. One is drive C, which is a 256 gigabyte. And another one is drive E, which is 512 gigabyte. I'm going to attempt to save a system image for drive C onto the drive E. And now we can just select this drive and click Next. Windows offers you to backup drive C and also Windows system uh, recovery environment. And all you need to do is just click Start Backup. Once backup is complete, Windows offers you to create a system repair disk. You can use this disk to boot from DVD and then use this backup image to restore your drive C. If you don't have it, it's a good idea to have it and create it when you still can. Or if you have another computer, that's what I rely on, and one computer breaks, you can always create it in another Windows 10 installation. So I'm going to click uh, No here. To restore your computer using system image you created, you need to reboot Windows in recovery mode. And make sure your system image is available on one of the connected drives. To restore from the created disk, you need to go to recovery mode and reboot your computer in advanced startup mode. Once you're in advanced startup mode, you click troubleshoot and then you go to um, advanced options and then you go to system image recovery. So you need to know with which uh, user account this image was created. Mine was created with video recording account. You need to uh, type in your password. Windows identifies the image that was created and it offers you to restore from that. Sometimes employer might ask you, why should I hire you? Answering this question is your best opportunity to impress employer by showing your qualities and experiences related to the position. When answer this question, make sure you talk about experiences related to the job. You want to mention your promotions. You want to mention your experiences related to the position. And also you want to mention your education and training experiences. A lot of times you might be asked about how would you create backup administrative account in Windows 10. In case you forget your Windows 10 password or your system will get compromised, it is very important to have alternative way of accessing Windows 10. To do that, you might consider creating backup administrative account so you have alternative way of logging in and recovering your information. I recommend creating local recovery account to make sure you can access your system without needing an internet connection. To do that, you would need to navigate to computer management, and here you can navigate to the local us users and groups. Make sure to select users, and here you just right mouse click and select new user, and then type new user account. You might consider using names that easy for you to understand, but harder to guess so nobody can guess your account, and you always want to use secure passwords here. The name might be backupadmin98. Uh, to give it some randomness. Uh, you might also want to uncheck this uh, unless you do want to change the password at next logon and typically select password never expires and then type the password here. And then once uh, everything is set up, you click create button and user account has been created. By default, Windows creates standard accounts, but what you can do now, you can make this account administrative account. To do that, you do right mouse click, click properties, 
click member of account is the member of users group but we just promoted it to make it member of uh, administrators group sometimes interviewer might ask a question explain the role of windows server in corporate environment the best answer to this question would be that windows server is typically used for file storage hosting specific windows applications for example sql server microsoft exchange biztalk or other apps and also functions potentially as Active Directory domain controller and can do a lot more in the corporate environment. Sometimes you might be asked how would you reboot Windows 10 into safe mode or access advanced recovery options. The easiest way to reboot Windows into safe mode is to click the restart button while holding shift button on your keyboard. To reboot it into the safe mode you need to click the restart button while holding the shift button on your keyboard at the same time. So I'm holding shift right now and I'm selecting restart and it takes me right into advanced options. Here I can reset this PC or choose other advanced options. You can launch Windows in advanced recovery mode by navigating into settings, updates and security, recovery, clicking advanced startup and clicking restart now button. To launch safe mode by navigating using the start menu, you click on the start menu, then select settings. Then you click on update and security. Here and you go to recovery. And in advanced startup option, you click on restart now button. Windows reboots into the safe mode. And from here, you can select troubleshoot option and you have access to reset your PC or advanced options. If you need to boot directly into the safe mode, you can use MS config tools in Windows 10. Keep in mind that in this scenario, it will only boot you into the safe mode and you will not be able to access advanced startup and recovery options. To use MS config and reboot into the safe mode, you type MS config and launch system configuration. Then you navigate to the boot tab, check save boot, and you pick different save boot options that you would like to select and click apply. And then click OK. And Windows prompts you to restart, you choose restart. And after restart, Windows gets you into the safe mode. So if I log in right now, I will be running Windows in the safe mode. If you'd like the content, please make sure to click the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. To re-enable F8 button in Windows 10, you would need to re-enable what's called Legacy Boot Menu Policy on your PC. To do that, you would need to launch Command Prompt option and execute command. To re-enable old style F8 Boot Menu options, you need to change Boot Menu Policy to Legacy. To do that, you need to navigate to the Start menu and launch Command Prompt as an administrator. Once in the Command Prompt, you need to run this command. I'm going to copy it from the clipboard and then paste it right into Command Prompt. The command is bcd edit slash set and then default boot menu policy legacy Basically, we're switching our existing policy, which is new for Windows 10, into the old boot menu policy, which is now called Legacy. Once you run this command, you need to restart and hold F8 button. So I'm holding F8 button right now while Windows restarts. And now you see advanced boot options with a lot of choices. You can go into the safe mode, safe mode with networking, command prompt, boot logging and uh, a lot of other options that's available. Sometimes you might get a question, what is Active Directory? Active Directory enforces security policies and install software to computers that connected to the domain. A lot of times candidates might be required to answer the question, what is Active Directory in Microsoft Windows domain? The best answer to this question might be that Windows domain is the centralized location that used to store accounts, computers, printers, and security features as part of database controlled by domain controller. It used to be that domain controller can only be in the server environment, in your corporate data center. Now, with Azure, 
The main controller can also be in the cloud. Sometimes interviewer might ask you, what is RAID array? RAID stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks, and RAID is typically used to provide redundancy, which might be mirroring across multiple hard drives, to provide more reliability in your data center. RAID can also be used to improve read and write performance across the server by using specific scripting configurations. There are different types of RAID arrays. For example, RAID 1 can provide redundancy with two or more disks which are identical in size. And RAID 0 array can provide improved performance with no redundancy. Sometimes you might be asked by the interviewer what are the network commands that you can execute to validate and test network connectivity. Two of the best commands you can execute from Windows command line would be ping and ipconfig. Both of them can check network connectivity between two hosts on the Windows network. Often, you might be asked, what is virtual machine? Virtual machine is an emulation version of operating system. You can have multiple copies of Windows Server, for example, running on a single hardware platform. This is mostly done through third-party hardware. If you'd like the content, please make sure to click the like button, share with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. A lot of times you might be asked the question, can you tell me about yourself? The best answer to this question is to make sure you provide information about you that related to the position you're applying for. Talk about your experiences, education, Windows certification, and maybe non-Windows certification as well. It is typically a good idea not to speak about things not related to the job, for example, your hobbies, not related to your Windows experiences. But feel free to mention your volunteer experiences, your education and training, promotions you received in the previous job, and some other things that are relevant to the position. And now, let's talk about some specific features of Windows 10 operating system you might need to know when interviewing for the position. By default, when you launch command prompt in Windows, it launches it under standard user account, which provides you limited access to scripting environment. But a lot of times, you may need to run Windows Command Prompt as administrator. To run Command Prompt as administrator, you click the Start button and type either CMD, or you can also type Command Prompt, the full name of the command. And here, before clicking on this, you do a right mouse click and select Run as Administrator. Windows prompts you, are you sure this is really one, what you want to do because this provides this command window administrative permissions? Uh, and we click yes here, and you see that um, in the upper right corner, it shows administrator column command prompt right here. And this is a good way to differentiate between regular command prompt, which we're just going to launch to compare. So we type it again. And you see there are two command windows. One is administrator column command prompt, and another one is just command prompt. Sometimes you may need to launch command prompt in the specific folder in Microsoft Windows. Let's look at how you can do it quickly. A lot of times if you launch command prompt, it launches it right in your user directory. For example, mine is C users video recording. But a lot of times you need to launch it uh, in the specific folder. So you have to navigate. For example, you, you may go get to the root folder and you have to execute multiple commands. Windows provides shortcut and allows you to launch it right in the folder where you want it to be. To do it, you launch File Explorer, navigate to the folder where you'd like to be. So for example, if you want to launch Command Prompt window right inside the temp folder, you navigate to temp folder. Then in the folder bar, you type CMD, and it launches it right uh, in the temp folder. And you can start executing command right for the temp folder. If this video was helpful, make sure to click the like button in your browser. Also. Please help your friends to learn this topic faster by sharing this video with them. And if you would like to be the first one to know about new videos to help you reach your goals faster, make sure to subscribe to my channel. Make sure to check out my other relevant videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We have a lot of great stuff planned in the pipeline and I don't want you to miss any of it. And if you'd like to get notified about all the new stuff that are coming out, make sure to subscribe to my email list as well. All links are here on the screen. Make sure to click to stay in touch. Thanks again for watching.